So Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia keeps going around uh, bragging that he works with Trump. Of course, remember, this is a Democrat. He's the most corporate of the corporate Democrats. Um, and it backfired recently. So Joe Manchin uh, was on Fox and Friends talking about how, oh, yeah, sure, I cheered for the president a lot during the State of the Union because, hey, I'm all about coming together in bipartisanship, and isn't this stuff great? And so... He, he does his little uh, song and dance where he acts like, oh, I'm so reasonable, I'm so in the center, aren't I the best? What he doesn't understand is people despise both political parties, rightly so. So when you act like the biggest cheerleader of both of those parties, people are going to hate you the most. They're going to be like, look at this fucking faker. This guy who's like so in that Washington bubble that he thinks like, look, I get along with everybody you hate is an argument that's going to make you like him. So he was on Fox and Friends, and he was cheering a lot during Trump's State of the Union. All the sh goofy shit about Trump talking about, and God wants us to do this. And Joe's like, yeah, oh, God, I love God. God's great. Don't we all love God? So hacky. Uh, but anyway, it backfired because uh, Mike Pence went to West Virginia, right in Joe Manchin State, and he gave a speech where he was like, Joe voted no on our tax cuts. Fuck him. <laughs> he didn't actually say fuck him, but he did like a hashtag on Twitter, Joe voted no. And it goes through all the Trump shitty policies that Manchin didn't vote for. By the way, Manchin votes with Trump a significant chunk of the time, I think more than any other Democrat. Um, so it's good that he didn't vote for Trump's tax cuts, but for example, he voted for Wall Street deregulation. So the problem with Joe Manchin is that he doesn't vote against Trump enough. Not that he doesn't vote for Trump enough, uh, Trump's shitty policies. So, but isn't it amazing? It goes to show you the mindset of these Republicans. It's like, you take the Democrat who agrees with them the most, and they still spit in his eye. Now, on the flip side, the Democratic Party, I mean, if there's a Republican who acts like they're, you know, like Susan Collins, for example, the Democrats embrace Susan Collins with open arms. Because they're like, oh, we love bipartisanship and getting along and holding hands, and we don't really believe in anything, so we'll em our tent is so big, we allow in the opposing party to set the agenda, and isn't this wonderful? Where's my stapler? So that's, that's the Democrats. But anyway, I, the reason I'm talking about Joe Manchin is actually not because of that. That's just a little, you know, side point about how much of a bitch he is and how it's so easy to take his message and twist it and have the Republicans shit on him anyway. And it's like, well, if you're gonna, they're going to shit on you anyway, why not actually do the right thing and fight for the people of West Virginia? But no, he sells out the people of West Virginia every time. And then the Republicans are like, why don't you sell them out more? But the reason we're talking about Manchin is I want to give you an update on what Paula Jean Swearingen is up to. Paula Jean Swearingen is Joe Manchin's primary opponent. Now, look, I see the YouTube uh, demographics and the breakdown, so I know who's listening to me in which state and stuff. Um, and West Virginia is not one of the top secular talk states. I mean, I do have plenty. I have thousands of listeners in West Virginia, but it's nowhere near like, you know, the biggest states for secular talk are... New York, California, and Texas. Those are the three biggest states. I mean, partly probably because they have the biggest populations, that those are the top states. But uh, even so, I don't think uh, West Virginia is anywhere near the top of that list. But if you're in West Virginia and you are you like secular talk, I need you to understand that this isn't a question you have to go vote for Paula Jean Swearingen in the Democratic primary. Joe Manchin is going to lose. It's just a matter of if he's going to lose to the Republican he's running against in the general, or if he's going to lose in the primary to Paula Jean Swearingen. Um, and anyway, here's what Paula Jean is up to. So as Joe Manchin's running around talking about how much he loves Republicans, and then they spit in his face, Paula Jean is saying, I am sincerely afraid that West Virginia is going to miss out on the benefits of legalizing cannabis. If our state doesn't fully legalize it on a state level now, we could see economic growth within six to eight months. It's a start uh, to economic diversification of our state, and we really need it. And then she goes on to give some numbers there, and the numbers show uh, this is revenue from marijuana uh, taxes, licenses, and fees in Colorado. In 2014, about it was about 67.5 million. 2015, about 130.4 million. 2016, 193.6 million. Um, and 2017, 100 about 182 uh, million dollars. So, in other words, as Joe Manchin is going around bragging about voting for, you know, deregulation of Wall Street and how much he loves Republicans, Paula Jean is actually out there saying, hey, I'm going to fight for the people of West Virginia. 
And that's such an important distinction, because she cares about these issues. I know she does. She's born and raised West Virginia. She talks about how the, the water in West Virginia would run black at times, and because there's the coal companies pollute the water. And Joe Manchin looks the other way while this happens, because he's in the pocket of the coal industry. Whereas Paula Jean says, listen, I'm for the people of West Virginia. I'm not for the corrupt business interests. I'm going to actually regulate to make sure your water's safe. Now, on the marijuana front, the people of West Virginia, you know what they believe in more than anything? Freedom. That's what they believe in. They love freedom. They don't want the big government knocking down their door because they had a joint. I mean, that's the biggest government you can imagine. Oh my god, you tweaked your consciousness slightly to get high for like an hour and a half or three hours or whatever the fuck it is. Well, you should probably be locked up in a cage and lose all of your rights as a result of that. What? So Paula Jean's out there going, no, we need to legalize it. Yes, we need to legalize it. And not only are you going to bring more freedom to the people of West Virginia, you're also going to, it's good for the economy of West Virginia. They're, we're, they're over-reliant on coal at the minute. So what does Paula Jean say? Well, let's have the marijuana industry become a big industry there. But she also talks about, we need a new, new deal. We need an infrastructure bill. We need to get people, what if the, the hub of renewable energy became West Virginia. Well, you can make that the case with a new New Deal, and that's what Paula Jean is going to fight for. So, and I've been telling you guys all along, man, listen, there's this goofy-ass thought in corporate Democratic minds of, well, I don't even know why we're bothering. We got to give up on Alabama and Kentucky and West Virginia because, oh my God, those are right-leaning states, and we're never going to win there. Why waste our time? That's what the corporate Democrats say. You know what I say to that? They're 100% wrong. Now, why do I say that? Because you haven't given them the option of populist left. You've given them the option of corporate Democrat. You've given them the option of, hey, we'll give you some platitudes and cliches, but then vote with Wall Street and be overly focused on identity politics. Like, but people don't want that in West Virginia. What they want is somebody who's going to fight for the people. So they want somebody who says, I'm not going to sell out to corporate interests. I'm going to fight for you to have health care with Medicare for all. I'm going to fight for a living wage for you. I'm going to fight for unionization so you get uh, better benefits and better wages. Um, I'm going to fight for a new, new deal. I'm going to end the wars and reinvest in our country here at home. If you give the good people of West Virginia that option, they're going to take it. But it's just a matter of giving them that option and then spreading the word. You know, speaking through that megaphone and letting everybody know, hey, there's another option. And there's so much evidence to suggest that these people are would vote for populist left if they knew it's on the menu. I mean, look at the town hall that um, Bernie Sanders did with Chris Hayes in West Virginia, in Trump country. A room full of Trump voters. Bernie answered all their questions, spoke about all the political issues of the day, and he got them to applaud for Medicare for all and a living wage. Isn't that amazing? He's getting them to applaud for ideas that are considered far left. But those people said it. The only reason we voted for Trump is because we thought he wasn't going to outsource our jobs, and Hillary was. We thought he was going to bust up the establishment. That's what they said. So give them the option of a Democrat who's going to bust up the establishment. Somebody on the populist left, and they'll vote for that person. So I just want everybody to know that's what Paula Jean is. That's what she's doing. That's who she's fighting for. And, it, you know, if you're in West Virginia and you're a Secular Talk fan, you got to get out there and vote for her and get involved, man. Contact the campaign, get involved, help her, make phone calls, canvas for her, all that stuff. Because this, I think, is one of the most important races in the country. And this sends a strong message, a, such a strong message to Washington that you are done with their bullshit. You're done with corrupt Republicans. You're done with corporate Democrats. And you're ready for a government that's going to fight for you and the ideas and policies that you want.